In this lesson, we will define limiting reactant and excess reactant and determine the limiting and excess reactants in a chemical reaction using stoichiometry. Please have your note sheet, periodic table, and calculator handy. When information is given in a problem for two or more reactants, you must determine which reactant is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess reactant. The limiting reactant is the reactant that is consumed first in the reaction. It will determine the amount of product that will be produced. Once the limiting reactant is consumed, the reaction is over. The excess reactant will have some remaining after the reaction is complete. Let's take a look at some examples. How many grams of zinc sulfide will be produced when 3.5 moles of zinc react with 4.25 moles of sulfur to form zinc sulfide? You can see that the amounts for each of the reactants is given. So you need to determine which one's the limiting reactant, which one are we going to run out of, and then which one is the excess reactant, which one is going to have some remaining after the reaction is complete. I'm going to use stoichiometry to predict how much product each reactant can produce. So 3.50 moles of zinc can produce 3.50 moles of zinc sulfide. Four point two five moles of sulfur produce four point two five moles of zinc sulfide. The reactant that produces less product is going to be our limiting reactant. In this case, it's going to be the zinc. Zinc produces 3.50 moles of zinc sulfide. We will never be able to make 4.25 moles of zinc sulfide because we will run out of zinc first. Now to answer the question in the problem, we want to know how many grams of zinc sulfide will be produced. So I'm going to use my limiting reactant, zinc, and 3.50 moles of zinc sulfide that are produced and convert that to grams using the molar mass. We get 341 grams of zinc sulfide. In this next problem, we have masses of each of the reactants given. So we're going to want to convert those to moles and do a little comparison to find the limiting reactant. I take my 12.6 grams of nitrogen and convert it to moles and then use my mole ratio to find the moles of ammonia that should be produced. I then take my 5.2 grams of hydrogen, convert it to moles, and find out how many moles of ammonia should be produced from the hydrogen. Again, I pick the mole amount that is smaller. We're going to run out of nitrogen before we run out of hydrogen. But the question is for the mass of ammonia that is produced. So I'm going to convert my 0.899 moles of ammonia to grams. I get 15.3 grams of ammonia. In this next example, we have the volume of each reactant provided. And we are at STP. Remember, the coefficients represent a mole ratio, but for gas reactants in products, according to Avogadro's hypothesis, our coefficients also represent a volume ratio. So 13.3 liters of C4H10 will give us 53.2 liters of carbon dioxide and 31.5 liters of oxygen will give us 19.4 liters of carbon dioxide. We will run out of oxygen before we run out of C4H10. 
So we have our final answer already, 19.4 liters of carbon dioxide. So in this problem, the oxygen was the limiting reactant. We used it to predict the amount of product that should be produced, and the butane, C4H10, was our excess reactant. And finally, we have an example that involves solutions. Notice uh, the volume and molarity given for the two reactant solutions. Please try this problem on your own, and we will go through the problem later in class. So hopefully, after watching this video, you know what a limiting reactant is and what an excess reactant is, and how to determine the limiting and the excess reactant in a chemical reaction using stoichiometry. If not, please go back and re-watch this video.